If you're filming long form content, podcast episodes, interviews, and you're using available lighting, you've certainly found yourself in a situation where your exposure and white balance at the start of your shoot is drastically different than it is a couple hours later at the end of your shoot. So here are some tips and tricks using DaVinci Resolve to make the best of a bad situation. All right, let's get into it. We're in DaVinci Resolve, and here I have my main timeline for our edit open. The edit is done, but the color correction has not been done. You can see at the beginning of the episode, towards the end of the episode, we have drastically different exposure and color balance. In future recordings, I may choose to leave automatic white balance on in situations like this, because to actually correct this white balance difference when you're not using raw footage is extremely difficult. You can make it better, but it'll never be perfect. I recommend using the multicam feature for an editing situation like this. And I also recommend doing the color correction within the multicam. So we're gonna go ahead and open up that. So I have a multicam timeline clip here, a multicam clip. I'm gonna right click it and say open in timeline. And now the timeline is my multicam. You don't see all those edits anymore. You just see one long take for each camera, right? And now we'll go into the color tab. We have three or four really key concepts that we're gonna talk about today. The first one is the structure or the organization of your nodes and stuff. So this is a color correcting node here. If you don't see it by any chance, you can right click and add a node corrector and then connect it to the inputs and the outputs. If you don't see the nodes, there's this little icon here that hides them, these clips and the timeline. We have three cameras. If you had stopped recording halfway through and started again, now you would have six clips, two for each of your cameras. So you might think, well, doing a bunch of corrections here and then pasting them onto each of these other clips is gonna be a lot of a hassle. And I'm gonna have to remember, if I ever ch make changes in the future, I'm gonna have to remember to copy and paste those to all of those other clips. And unfortunately, you're correct. That's what you're gonna have to do. You might think that no, there's uh, shared nodes, or no, you can do a group pre-clip. However, none of these actually work with keyframes, unfortunately. DaVinci Resolve Blackmagic, please change that, because that would be great. But for now, as of DaVinci Resolve 17.2.1, none of those options support keyframes in the timeline. So I'll show you quickly. Let's say if I go into a group pre-clip, now you're not able to make keyframes. Same with timeline. And if you go make this a shared node, it doesn't make keyframes in shared node either. Thomas from the future here, a quick correction. You can actually do keyframes on the timeline, but not in a multi-cams timeline, only in like a normal timeline. You can make keyframes on shared nodes, but for whatever reason, those keyframes value changes don't appear on the other nodes that are shared. So the first important tip is to use timeline markers. I've got them in my clip already, but I'll just show you how to do it. At any place you have a playhead, if you hit M on your keyboard, it creates a marker, okay? If you're on your main timeline and you have a clip selected and you hit M, it puts that marker within the clip. And if you had no clip selected and you hit M, it puts that marker in the timeline. But in the color pane, that's not the case. In the color pane, it doesn't matter which of your clips you have selected. If you hit M, it's going to place a marker on the timeline. You can select the markers and delete them. You cannot move them though in the color pane. You can, you can move them in the edit pane. You can move those, but you cannot move the color pane ones. The next point here about this is super important. You have these hotkeys, shift plus up arrow or down arrow. So shift and up, brings you to the previous marker, shift and down brings you to the next marker. And why this is extremely important will become evident once we start to actually add keyframes, but the keyframe tool in DaVinci Resolve's color pane doesn't have any kind of snapping. So if you try to get close to where you've made a correction and you wanna change that correction, you might be one or two or three frames off, and now you're not actually changing the data that you are trying to change, you're adding one more keyframe of data, which uh, doesn't help anybody here. It's not what we want. But by shifting, I guess we can really say, between these keyframes using the hotkeys, we can have a confidence that when we start to make a change in our 
values that we're affecting the actual keyframe and not a frame that's one or two frames off of it. So where I've decided to place the markers is very intentional. At the very least, you would want one at the beginning and one at the end, because you're going to want to have certain values for your exposure and color temperature at the beginning and certain values at the end, and then you'll have blending in between. So at this part here, it started to get darker, and then I got up to remove the ND filters from my camera lenses. So I have another keyframe just before I get up to remove my ND filters, and then one just after I sat down and before starting the interview again, because there's a big difference in exposure at that point. One here at about the time that it's kind of become dark, and it's fairly linear between this point to this point. So I think if I make a correction here and a correction here, it's gonna transition nicely. And one at the very end of my footage because it's slightly different than it was here, but I don't imagine we'll have drastically different values in our corrections at that point than we do here. Just a little bit of a change to make it a little sweeter. I think you wanna have as few of these markers as possible. You know, even just two would have been, would have been great. That you have one at the beginning, one at the end, so you do one color correction, you do another correction, color correction, and then you let the system interpolate between the two for you. Maybe once you've done that, like once you're done, add one in the middle just to kind of fine tune it in the middle and then you're, you're good. Okay, the next really important part is gonna be about our keyframes. But to, to do that, first I wanna give this one here a name for organizational purposes. I'm gonna call this exposure. Even though I've changed the name, it still has the number one. Well, this zero one here corresponds to corrector one down here in the keyframes. If you don't see the keyframes, probably you have the parades or some other vector scope open. So just be aware of this tab here. Any values that I change within any of these correctors will be, when I have this node selected, are gonna be changing them in corrector one. If first I click this diamond and make it red, now automatic keyframes are turned on and any changes I make will get written into the data. Now, if I have my cursor, my playhead in an arbitrary spot and I make a change to something, it's gonna add a keyframe there. So we don't want to do that. What we want to do instead is to shift up or shift down to one of our predefined markers and then make our changes. Uh, if you eventually down the line add additional nodes, let's say one for white balance, by default, it does not have its automatic keyframings turned on. So be sure to add that as well when, when you get to that point. My last main tip and trick here is whichever of these tools you decide to use to change your exposure, for instance, try to be consistent with it. So if you're using curves on uh, the on the first keyframe here, then use curves on the last keyframe, use curves on the middle keyframe. You know, Don't use lift only on the first keyframe, curves only on the second keyframe, contrast only on the last keyframe. Don't do that uh, because you wanna have, you wanna be interpolating between the same variables. I think you're gonna get better results that way. It's just a, just a hunch. I haven't really tested it for sure. Like maybe you can get away with doing it however you want. But from my point of view, just for like keeping things simple, you wanna to try to keep as few of these nodes as possible, a few of these, as few of these corrector nodes as possible. If I was only really doing white balance, I might even just add it to the first one here. This is different. This is different than if you're doing a commercial shoot, you have a 20 second long clip and you wanna make it look as awesome as possible. You're gonna have a lot of nodes potentially. But for something long like this, you know, the more nodes you make, the more keyframes you have, the more likely you're going to be trying to make a correction and you're doing the correction on the wrong node. You're doing the correction on the wrong keyframe and uh, it gets messy. So uh, what you would do next was you, is you'd go through each of these. I would probably start with just the kind of exposure. Um, start the very first keyframe, go to uh, well, I, in my case, I have to do a few more because I have the point where I got up to change the ND filter. But if I didn't do that, then I would have done one here. I would make my exposure corrections here. Let's say maybe we could make it a little bit 
See, I'm not even doing it to the right one. Exposure, but using the white balance node, right? So that's why keep it, keep it more simple at the beginning. In fact, at the beginning, don't even have that extra node there. Just focus on the exposure because you'll end up making white balance corrections on your exposure node and you'll make exposure corrections on your white balance node. It, it gets messy. You might want to just do both of them on the same node for something as simple as this. Because we're not going to have a lot of masks and we're not going to be keying out the sky or you know doing anything too drastic in this particular case. Uh, so I'm going to jump ahead to when I've finished doing all the color grading. So here we are uh, at the end of our color corrections. You can see all the keyframes we've made. And as I do my tabbing, you'll see that each of these markers and each of these keyframes line up. You know, I've, I've stuck to what I said that I was going to do. And these little kind of triangle fades that you see between them, this is to indicate that these are dynamic keyframes and that the values are transitioning from the values of the one keyframe to the next keyframe. You will notice that, uh, let's say I'm on this node here. So I have, I don't know if you can see some of these values. Let me see if I can find one that, that works. Okay, let's say the, the gain here, we've got like these values, one, but essentially about 1.5. Now let's go to the next, that next keyframe there. 1.35, right? So they're different. But let's go halfway in between. No, they're still at 1.35. Don't worry about that. The values here don't update in real time. It would be nice if they did, but they don't. Uh, but behind the scenes, they are actually updating. They are animating behind the scenes. You just They don't show you the numbers in the variable fields animating in front of your eyes. If I was to add a new keyframe here, you would see these values change to a value that's halfway between the two values. Let me just give you an example for that. Let's say corrector one, add a keyframe. Boom, right there, halfway between our values, right? And uh, just quickly see how this stuff looks like before and after. Got some before and after, and you know, before and after. And you know, I, I tried to strike a balance between each frame looking as good as it could versus also trying to make the beginning and the end feel like they exist in the same universe. So when you're finished with this, if you finish with this, you're going to have to take your node and 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 apply it to your other clips here, right? You're going to have to take all the work you've done and copy and paste it to these other ones. And as far as I know, you have to do it one at a time. I did have this one thing happen to me the other day where I pasted and they all went over, and uh, I've not been able to reproduce that. So generally, like, okay, I've made ex changes to my exposure node, copy it go to each of these, select the exposure node, paste, select the exposure node, paste. Go back to my first one, copy it, go to here, paste it into there, paste it into there. You know. That's why it's nice to have these names. You know, When you first open one of these, it would be empty or just have one node in it, and it wouldn't have any labels. So one thing you could do is select these two that you were not working on, and then right click on the one that you were working on and say to apply the grade. That will copy all your nodes over, but it's not going to copy the keyframe data. So you'll still have to go back and go to your source one here and copy and paste each node back over. But at least maybe it's a little bit more uh, straightforward in terms of oh, which node should I paste where if you already have the labels on there. So that's how you do it. Well, thank you for listening. I hope you got some value out of that. If you'd like to see the podcast episode where this grade uh, was realized, you can check it out, the final grade in this video here. And we'll see you next time. Uh, the next video will be how I made the thumbnail for this video.